I think the concept of reworking and reinterpreting another designer's work is very exciting. I think it creates an opportunity for there to be creative tension. I love the idea of reinterpreting, but actually I even more love the idea of uh, creating a moment between uh, two identities, two cultures, a moment uh, of meeting. When I opened the box from Valentino for the very first time, I was incredibly nervous because I'm, I'm a bit of a planner, so I like to know what I'm getting in advance. Beautiful. But it was completely kept a secret. So when it arrived, uh, I opened up the box and it was this beautiful uh, fuchsia pink haute couture dress with these incredible pleats. Laying it on the table, you really start to appreciate the level of work and craftsmanship that has gone into this garment. And it's quite a lot of fabric on it, um, not only the silk taffeta, but inside it's lined with um, a very soft pink tulle, and then under there, a very uh, hard, uh, an even harder tulle. It really is a work of art, and you almost have to just stand there and be really arrested by its beauty. Even if it does come apart, I think we, we'll just replete the section that we need. Yeah, stressful, but it'll be okay. It was very exciting, this idea of reworking and recontextualizing another designer's uh, pieces, because it speaks to the conversations we're having already around this idea of overproduction. You know, instead of making new things, let's look at what we already have and try and upcycle and reinterpret and change that. The look that Tebe sent me was uh, the very classic contemporary suit done with, uh, with the blankets from uh, his uh, history, his heritage. I love the idea of reinterpreting. I even more love the idea of uh, creating a moment between uh, two identities, two cultures. I'm Italian, we are here in Roma, and we're working on a work of a, a human that comes from another part of the world. And I wanted to get this heritage into my own culture, which is the couture. From a conversation always comes something, something different, especially when, when you talk with people that are different from, from you, that, that have different stories, of course. I still feel that fashion is a self-expression, is a language. Actually, the, the things that impressed me the most was this letter, the one that uh, Teb sent me. He says something that is very moving to me. I'm part of a tribe called the Basotto, and blankets form a very big part of our culture. So I wanted to enlighten uh, this fabric, but also this, his culture. And so that was the very starting point uh, of this uh, collaboration, work, interpretation, whatever you want to call it. I often say I'm not a great verbal communicator, so to make up for that, I use my clothes in a way to almost speak on my behalf. I really wanted to take this haute couture piece and move it into my universe, my context, and especially my way of working, which is more in a ready-to-wear context. So for the dress, I'm thinking it's going to break my heart 
but I'm going to completely unpick it, uh, remove the skirt part, remove the top part, and use one of my patterns to recut it as a very elevated trench coat. And with the leftover fabric, I think we're going to create a wide leg pair of pants with a very generous cuff on it and a matching shirt. The caper is the, the purest expression of, of the future because it's so simple, so pure, and uh, it's done uh, with uh, just cut and uh, super uh, not decoration. We deconstructed the, the suit actually, and uh, we, we are applying the suit, the, the fabric on top of the cape, giving shape to the cape, but using the blanket as an embroidery. So between the cape as expression of couture and the blanket that is expression of Tebes culture, I think this creates a conversation and a good tension between our history and his heritage. I was very excited to work with Pier Paolo on this project. I deeply respect what Pier Paolo does as a, as a designer. I think his relationship to color, his relationship to proportion is so fresh. And I think he's certainly contributed to the changing uh, conversation around what haute couture is. I love it. Clip there, and it creates a really beautiful shape hat. I thought Tebe has something to say. He's from uh, South Africa, which is, I think is difficult. He's not exactly in the middle of fashion. But I think we share same values because talking about uh, identities, uh, being faithful to who you are, trying to face uh, another world, I think it's, it's interesting. I think the connection has to be human first of everything. Actually, I don't have idea of what Tebe will do. I sent him a very, say classic in volume future tafta dress and uh, I hope that uh, he will uh, handle it uh, in uh, his own way. I think I've been respectful of his work but I, I've worked with my own uh, instruments and I hope he will do the same. I expect that he's going to do the opposite of what I'm doing. So taking something uh, in ready to wear and moving it into his very high haute couture universe I'm almost doing the opposite in a lot of ways, taking this incredible piece that he's created at Valentino and moving it into ready to wear, where more people essentially can see themselves in it. What I did was exactly the, the mix between creating something which was the connection between your uh, identity and my own identity. It was actually quite intimidating because it arrived in like a very big metal flight case with not only one, but like two keys. But once we opened it, you really get such a even bigger appreciation of like Haute Couture and what uh, Pierre Paolo does, because, you know, it's it's precision to, to look absolutely effortless, you know, and everything, like nothing was out of place. And I think the exciting challenge with it was using absolutely everything, the zips, the corsetry, um, the construction, the tool. I felt like if I was going to unpick the beautiful pleats, um, on the waist, I was going to just get struck down by lightning. So we just preserved all the plissé pleats and moved it into the armhole. And then the white tulle that was inside the dress, um, we took for dyeing um, with this incredible dye master called Paul in the south of Johannesburg. Um, and we matched the pink um, to the exact level um, as the as the original fabric on top. So there was a lot of there was a lot to play with. It was a lot of fabric, right? <laughs> it was a lot of fabric. As I told you, I love the, the fact that uh, this, this uh, fabric was originally a blanket uh, and was, uh, uh, was definitely part of your culture. I, I wanted to be, to, yes, to alight the, your identity, your culture and your heritage with something that could be uh, more like Italian kind of couture. It's like a melting between the two. The cape is a symbol of, you know, Italian Madonnas, the, the mm -hmm. culture, the Renaissance 
culture. And it's also a symbol of couture because it is the purest shape in couture. The fabric was the, the starting point of what the process. And so what we did was to cut the, the fabric in order to give it a different uh, placement to alight the, the, the fabric itself. So I used a, a different fabric because there were not as much to, to yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, that I wanted to use the fabric as the embroidery itself of the of the mm-hmm. cake. I'm very happy of, of you know this uh, this uh, the connection we we created because I felt that even in yours there's something something that came out from our meeting and that's it. So it's not something that I could do alone or nor you could do alone. So it's, yeah, it's the result of the meeting of two humans which I like. In my own work, I really do love throwing opposites together. And just that idea of things that shouldn't even be together, just like being meshed into one thing. I think that's where a certain magic can happen. Oh, grazie. The final look reflects the respectful conversation we, we had. In a way, it reflects uh, the roots of Tebe, his tribe. It became a suit, and now he had a, a new transformation, becoming a cape. Because of how I grew up, I used to be so embarrassed about everything around me, but like I've made it my own personal mission to almost take that and move it into the echelons of luxury, you know? I think people have really stale ideas about what African fashion is. I just want to show people that we're very nuanced. So it's like a cape in a facing contemporaneity. And it's, uh, of course, the end of this path we had with Tebe. I just hope that Tebe will recognize himself. I think when you explore collaborative efforts like that and you test things that are very disparate, I think when they come together, it forms something new altogether, something uh, challenging, and I think this project was exactly that. I'm very happy, I have to say, that what, what I saw, because at the end, the, the challenge was to, to reflect two stories, two identities, uh, two big cultures melting together into something that could uh, reflect both together. Mm-hmm.